Hello? It's Daniel. <clears throat> Kill that echo real quick. Can you guys hear me okay? Let me get started here. Turn this up a bit. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, cool. Um, so, tonight's stream is going to be kind of short because I'm just, uh, let me pop this up. I'm just uh, looking at sketches for the final character in the mentorship. And uh, I'm going to talk about ways they can be improved on before you go to final. So... For anyone watching who's not familiar with the class so far, um, this is a Crimson Daggers mentorship. It's kind of a beta test to see if mentoring can work with the forums. It's been pretty cool so far. I've had a lot of fun. Uh, people have been taking the class really seriously. I'm teaching something I know real well. Uh, one of the only things I know real well, which is character design. Uh, I'm not the best at rendering. I'm not the best at lighting, but I do know design. So. I've been teaching that. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, basically, the class, if you're not familiar, is uh, Arthurian myth retold in a different culture. So it's the four basic stereotypes that are in all the old legends. It's the you know the up and coming king who's gonna save everything, the mystic Merlin type dude. And then two bad guys. We've got Morgan, his half sister, and then we've got. Uh, their ancestral son, Mordred. So it's four characters uh, set in a different culture. So it's been uh, pretty cool. It's been a lot of fun. And people have really stepped up to the plate. So I'm going to talk about uh, Milan's first, working backwards from the last page on the forum. So that's what's up. Uh, okay, so... Looking at these, I kind of like, see this is tough, but I think I'm going to have to say number three I like the most, uh, only because your Morgan is very much uh, a red palette thing, and I know that he's her son, and that Arthur's thing is red, but I, I really like the way that these blues look. Um, I think... There's an opportunity in here to work some of the red back in, in certain places. I don't think it has to be, in like, you know, entirely blue. But I do like the blue a lot more than the red for his character. Especially, uh, I think it's because you went with a costume that feels a lot more like, uh, like a thief. He's like a brigand kind of dude. So, with that kind of outlaw look, I think the blue works a lot better because the gold and the red feels very royal and kind of austere. The blue and the silver, um, I think is a little more casual. Feels a lot more like he's a sneaky, low-born kind of dude. Uh, okay, so things to watch out for. I'm not going to do full paint overs tonight because this is just a crit, but uh, these feet are very much a mirror image of one another. Um, it's something I briefly mentioned a while ago in the sketch, but it's very much like you drew a foot and then it feels like you flipped it and you put it over here. So it's like, you know, one of one of these, it looks like this foot is more forward than the other one. So maybe kicking this leg back to like, you know, here. Kicking it back to like here. You know, just, just try and stand in that position. You're not going to have your feet wide open like that at that kind of angle. It's just uh, it's a very unnatural kind of angle for the feet to be at. So I'm gonna just play around here real quick. Just trying to find something. Feels like this foot was clearly in the background though. Like he's kicking his front foot forward. So I don't know, either either bend it at the knee or just kick it back in perspective and you can still have that kind of mirrored look but just make it, you know, clearly behind it. If the heel of the foot in the front is here, then the heel of the foot in the back should be back here. And you should show the bend of the knee and the cast shadow of the fabric. 
because that means that the bottom half of the leg is now moving away from us. But yeah, that that's really the only thing I'm seeing that I don't like about this is that uh, his feet are on the same plane, which makes his pose really, really flat. So bring one foot forward significantly and push another foot back. That's really the, the big thing. Um, hope that makes sense. And I know I'm not really doing much in terms of paint over. I'm just trying to like explain what I'm saying. I'm not really putting the time in to make it look pretty. Just pointing things out. But yeah. Um, let's see. Why is the sword on? F why why is it flaming? Is there an explanation for that that I didn't see on the forum? Or is it like, you know? I'm adding some some more plumes, so it's not just the one plume. Uh, more gone with the fire idea. Fair enough. I mean, yeah, fair enough. If you want to take a liberty like that and give him some kind of magic sword, that's okay. But if you do that, I need to see lighting on the character that tells me that that thing's on fire. So everywhere that the fire would be catching... Keep in mind, it's not it's not a, you know, 200 watt light bulb, but fire, especially like, you know, coals from like a campfire would be a good thing to look at. They do give off kind of a dull orange sort of glow that you could use to counter light the character. So like, you know, anywhere that the light would be catching from that thing, especially on the metal, it would be really bright because the metal's polished and it reflects at a higher rate. So or higher intensity, not right. But, you know, places where that fire would be catching, I want to see the lighting. I want you to show me that you are thinking of it as a light source and not just a cool thing. Because, you know, when, when people, especially ADs, our, our directors who look at your portfolio, when they see stuff like flaming swords and spells and stuff like that that are making light, um, they're really looking at, do you understand what that does to the piece? Because, like, if it's on fire, then fire is a light source. It's a very warm light source, and that means that to make it make sense, the light has to be catching on the character in a very specific way, the way that it would be if he was actually lit that way. Um, if you don't do that stuff and you don't follow through with the lighting, it shows that you, it, it feels like you threw it in as a last-minute thing. Um, the thing I always talk about on here is, like, you throw it in just because you feel like the piece is boring. Stuff like that that you throw in and you don't follow through in terms of lighting and fundamentals, um, it makes the piece look weaker. It makes it feel like, ah, oh, I didn't like him, so I gave him a flaming sword to make him fake cool at the end. Like, you know, it just feels like something tossed on. But if you do the lighting and you make it work with the piece and you make the lighting really sensible and universal, then it feels like a very well thought out idea. That's the difference between the one and the other, is one feels like a well thought out, fully fleshed out thing that you had planned, and the other one feels like a last minute decision. Like, oh shit, it's boring, I better add a flaming sword, versus, yeah, this is a guy with a flaming sword, it's flaming for a reason, I, uh, I thought that through start to finish, the lighting reflects that I understand what fire does, it's a conceptual thing, you know, it just seems like it makes more sense. But hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. I'm still not happy with that leg I kicked back, but it can't be a mirror image of the one next to it. It can't be boom, boom, same level, same foot photo flipped. Which, by the way, it does look like you photo flipped it. But, yeah, you know, you can change the leg if you want. Just uh, that lighting from the sword has to be there. Oh, hey, Nate. What's going on? Good to see you. Uh, anyway, and actually, uh, earlier I was talking about, I feel like there's places you could bring the red into the costume. The lighting could actually be the place you bring the red into the costume. You might not even have to put anything red on him. You could probably just do that via the, uh, shadows and the lighting from the sword. But yeah, 
feels cool. Uh, let's see. I would continue the silver stuff up to the top, or the gold, or whatever it is. Silver in this one, gold in the other ones. Um, I don't like that last one. Show me the folds of the cloth in the turban. You know. Uh, the only other thing I would say is bring me some saturation in the final. Um, the color palettes are all very controlled and they make a lot of sense in your three images here, but I need more like, you know, they're, they're still very gray, they're still very dark. Um, I want more vibrance like you were getting in the Morgan piece. I know that'll come when you push it to finish, so I feel kind of bad preemptively critting it, but just make sure that it's not so dull. <clears throat> but yeah. One thing. I almost feel like this is very minor, but I almost feel like opening his hand like he's kind of grasping and about to close it would make more sense with this pose. Like he's kind of flexing his hand. I feel like that would be stronger than just having it be a fist. So I'm just dotting in real quick, like the, the fingers are still separated, the thumbs down on the bottom. I almost feel like that kind of opened hand, like he's about to make a fist, he's flexing the fingers. That feels stronger for me because it feels like a grasp. He's grasping out, power grab kind of thing. Feels feels stronger for the character. Not necessarily a claw, but like he's halfway to making a fist. If you're going to make a fist, your hand's open, then your fingers are all curled in, then your finger's a fist. It's that, that mid-tension. He's closing in to make that fist. Anyway, I hope that made sense. I'm gonna move on. Uh, okay, Jake B. T -t 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 Mongol Mordred. Mongol Mordred. Let's take a look. Okay, I like this design so far. This is cool. Um, a few things. Let's take a look. I'm going to add an adjustment layer just for the people watching because it's all very much the same value. I'm going to make it more bright so you can see the lines. I'm going to do something more like this just so the people watching can see your design better. Yeah, there you go. Um, this is cool. There's one thing, uh, a few things actually. Okay, so he's he's meant to be leaning forward, but there's nothing going on with his legs. So what happens is it looks like he's a hunchback. Um, let me try. Let me see if I can explain this a bit better. The the pose is the first thing here that I would take issue with. It's uh, it's very much a dude standing normally from the waist down, but then his top half is lurched over, and it feels very kind of unnatural. I would... Let's see, so the crotch is like here. Either bend this knee up like he's standing on something. You know what I mean? Like, either either kick this up so the bend of the upper body makes sense or make his upper body straight up and actually bring the shoulder up to here and have his head up here but yeah one or the other I'll go with the kicked up knee for now just because that's quicker and I'm just gonna talk about your design and not so much your pose so let's do that flush this out 
And again, these are just really quick crits. I don't want to take too long. I want you guys to get back to work and finish these. So if there's a few little anatomical mistakes here and there, I'm mainly just talking about the design. Unless there's a huge glaring anatomy issue. Which there always is with everybody. Myself, professionals, everyone. Anatomy is something you never totally perfect. Um, couple things. So he's got this really long straight sword. It's kind of like a katana, but it's not curved. But then he's got this sheath that's very short. So it's one of two things. Either you drew the sheath wrong in perspective and it's supposed to be longer than it is, or you uh, just made the sheath too small. But think about this. If you, if you put the sword inside the sheath, there's no way it would fit. Either there would be a ton of sword hanging out the top, or the blade would go through the bottom, and it, why does he have a sheath at that point? Why doesn't he just put it through his belt? Because then with an exposed blade, it would still cut his knee. So you won't, that's something that uh, it's a very easy mistake to make, but the cover for the sword has to match the sword, and that's something that a lot of people miss. I used to make this mistake all the time, but I think you just drew it wrong in perspective. It can be shorter than the blade. You just have to clearly show me that it's tapering, that it's going back in space. Um, this all works. I really like the belt. That's all really cool. Um, this thing in the middle, I would show more of on the bottom. This kind of, you know, it's like the thing they based like the WWF belts on. It's these kind of like leather and metal girdles that barbarians wore. Conan wears them a lot when you look at like Frank Frazetta paintings. I would show some of that below the belt. Because having it start here and then just disappear doesn't really make sense. Unless it's supposed to be the top of that skirt thing, but it's not the same pattern, so I don't know if it's supposed to be. But either way, uh, let's see. Now that I've kicked the leg up, I'm going to show the other side of the skirt thing hanging over the other leg. Oops. So over here, having it fold up and over. Uh, I know this is really rough, I'm sorry. So other things, um, I would break the silhouette up here a bit more and really show that fur. It looks like it's supposed to be fur. I would have it come up higher and then descend down into the cape so this kind of thing where you see it going over the shoulder. Really, really have it break that silhouette. Because what you were running into before, if I shut my crit layer off, hope you see what I mean. It makes it look like he's hunched back. You've got this very round shape here. I'm going to outline in red. And nothing breaks that oval. Everything's inside that oval except his head. So it's like... When you look at that in terms of 3D space, that means that there's a big mass of the body back here, then the head is in front of it, okay? And then everything else is kind of just hanging below it. So it feels like the head is coming forward out of this big lump, and it makes this illusion that he's hunchbacked, because then his arms are hanging at the side. It's like, you know, his spine looks incredibly leaned. So breaking up that silhouette and kicking up this leg to show that he's hunched over, because if, if you hunch forward this much and you're wearing tons of armor and shit, that's pretty heavy. So it's like you're either falling forward or your spine is broken to support your weight that way. So I'm going to make it like he's leaning forward onto this knee here. And hopefully that will, you know, add enough weight to the bottom of the character to support that lean in the top. Um, let's see. The only other thing I would really say is, uh, let's see. There's a Mongolian. Um, all right. 
Let's look at these. Let's look at this Mongolian. So already from this Mongolian, I found a cool idea. So, uh, okay. So on this same layer that I was talking, I'm going to do a new layer. I'm going to do it with, uh, I'll do it with like a blue. So just watch here for a minute. You've got a cool sort of shape down here that I want to, I want to repeat. You've got this very, uh, heavy triangle thing going on where it's, it's kind of this tapered hanging triangular shape down here. And I feel like it would add a cool balance to the character if you repeated that somewhere up here. So I'm looking at this uh, reference I pulled up and a cool opportunity to sort of echo that hanging, swishing thing is on these, these side guards that hang down from the helmet. I thought too much of his uh, face was exposed. It felt like he was wearing like a baseball cap instead of like a, like a headpiece or a helmet. So I'm just thinking if you if you hung some some leather from the sides, you could add little studs in it, little metal studs or brass or something. You know, then you could maybe because uh, it's very straight. I feel like you could fan out the sides a bit, just to give like a silhouette of some horn. You know, just a just a point. He's an evil character. Any any opportunity where you can use points and kind of curves feels a lot stronger. I think the top is okay. I might uh, add some like horse hair going like this. You know, just to give the head a little bit more weight. I'm looking at that Mongolian reference I pulled up and it's got a really cool thing where there's like long animal hair trailing from the top. I feel like that'll add a bit more drama. Um, but yeah, so now more of his face is covered. And then because the face is covered, depending on where you bring in the light, for example, if your light was coming from up here, which is the next step now that you've drawn it, is to show me the light. The light's coming from up here down onto him. Now you can do really cool stuff because you've added those flaps where you drop a shadow over the eyes and then you can cover part of the face with the shadow of the flap. Cover that part of the nose under here cast shadow from the face down there, cast shadow from the flap, and you can really start hiding the features and making them look sort of evil. And yeah, Thomas, that's right. It's kind of the same idea as the Shredder. But that's the thing. The Shredder's like a perfect bad guy design. And the reason it's a perfect bad guy design is because it's this very powerful shape. Then it's horns and a spike. Then it's another curved evil shape totally in shadow and then it's a third curved evil shape you know what I mean it's like it's all curves and spikes but it's it's perfect it's kinda like Lord Zed from the Power Rangers that's another really great bad guy design but uh think about the body okay and what I mean by that is I'm just gonna lay in some shadows real quick everything I put in shadow isn't catching light I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the form here real quick so this is all in shadow. Oops. Uh, this is all in shadow. Here, here, here. Uh, there's a curve in here that I want you to reconsider. Because you had his back. This is another reason he was looking hunchbacked, by the way. The line of his back is right here. It's coming up into the shoulder from here, so it's it's all skewed to look like there's a giant hump on his back. But if you bring that in, like see how I'm pulling that in to really show that, you know, his back, his spine is here instead of here where the arm is. That's going to make it look like he's kind of just leaning his shoulders and his head over and not his entire spine is curled. Pulling the spine in back here to get rid of that. Then you can drop this sword to a more smooth angle. You know, that kind of thing. And then this is all in shadow. This is in shadow. 
But yeah, I hope that makes sense. I know this is kind of a messy pan over, but I just want to show you why he was looking like a hunchback. Anyway, hope that helps. Sorry it's so messy, but hopefully that you could follow it when I was doing it. <clears throat> uh, Mordred from Tadis. Okay. Again, good design. Uh, good use of repeated shapes from the Morgan. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, this is cool. I like the, uh, the turned head, the fist thing going on. That's pretty cool. Um, let's see. So, uh, an issue that we've had a few times with your pieces, it's popping up again. It's, uh, weak arms and weak hands. Um, especially this one in the front doesn't really feel powerful enough or long enough. So let's talk about that. I feel like it should be out here and this gauntlet should come up higher. And, uh, you should really show me some, some muscle here. You know, show me that, that bicep. More, more curve in the muscle, a longer arm. You know, hands are hard. I'm just kind of sketching the men. See, one thing I've noticed doing the mentoring, uh, I think it's a better idea personally to show you where it's wrong instead of fixing it for you. I think you learn more if I just kind of sketch it in and tell you it's wrong and then you can go figure it out. If I just fix it all for you, number one, it would take forever to do this stream because I'd be fixing all the anatomy and everything as well as the design. And number two, I don't think you'd learn as much because you learn more from discovering it yourself. So I am going to tell you that this arm should be longer and that that hand needs to be redrawn because that's true. But, for the sake of time, and for the sake of your hands-on education, I'm going to let you fix it. I'm just going to scribble it in. But anyway, uh, I'm just trying to scribble in your designs. So, hold on. I think uh, there is a small balance issue I'm going to address real quick. There's a lot of blue at the top and not really any at the bottom. And you don't need a lot at the bottom, but I feel like, you know, a simple thing like uh, if this was blue instead of sand colored, it would balance the character out a lot more. It would bring some of that blue into the bottom. You could break it up. You could line it with that kind of sand color, but I just want a little bit more of that blue somewhere. I like this this thing right here you have going on where it's swooping up from the waist and then it's a very baggy sleeve. And then you kind of see it around the back side here. I'm gonna make this angle a bit more dramatic with some uh, some tension folds coming down, like it's sort of tucked into his bracer. I feel like that'll add a lot more to break up that symmetry. You don't want it to be too symmetrical. That's the thing, because then it starts to get boring. So I feel like pulling it up to here would be cool. Maybe even having it up here. I don't know if this is too much. This might be too much. I'm going to sketch it in anyway, though. Like it's folded over the top, and then underneath, like over here, you could put some of the gold trim on it. Uh, I really like that idea, though, of that 
that loose cloth and t being tucked into the arm. <clears throat> so he's got the sword in the back, but it's not really clear that it's the sword. It, too much of it's being obscured. I would, uh... Bring it in like like this. I don't know, reposition it so we see more of the blade. I almost feel like... <clears throat> hmm. I like that sword, but I feel like... So the symbol of nomination in ancient Egypt was a flail, and it was basically a tapering shaft like this, and then a bunch of whips coming off the top, or reeds. I almost feel like he should have something like that somewhere, because it's the, the domination thing, but the rook and the flail were the two things that all the pharaohs had. It was the shepherd cane, because they led the people, and then the flail, because they were a symbol of power. But, I do like the uh, kind of challenging fist. Be See, the reason I like the fist here, and I didn't like it in uh, Milan's, the way Milan had posed his feet, it looked like that guy was in mid-turn during a sword fight, and it the fist felt too still. It felt too like, you know, he's too in the moment to have a fist. But this guy feels like he's standing in front of an army, and it's a very stoic moment. And he's like, you know, challenging some guy, like, we're going to come take you down. Like, this feels a lot more rooted and still, like he's given a speech. But Milan's felt very much like it was in the middle of a sword, for, uh, sword fight. It was like we just paused a movie. And it was in the middle of uh, turning around. But yeah, just to explain that, in case anyone was wondering. Uh, you see what beefing up that arm and adding more of that diagonal at the top did? See how kind of weak that shape looked? Look how much stronger it is if you pull out that triangle by pulling the fabric out. It's crazy what little tiny things can do to a piece in terms of the silhouette. Um, Other things... I might make the thing on the top bigger uh, just to have it break the silhouette a bit and to have the crown be a little more impressive. Better use of uh, shadows in the face. I'm have the gold breaking that boundary and coming down into his head. like this, like it's coming down over his brow, interrupting that line. You don't want too many straight lines. In a design like this, it, it interrupts, interrupts the enjoyment. Some cast shadows on this gold. Uh, but yeah, the same problem you had with that arm is down here in the legs. Um, look at muscular dudes. Really beef up those calves. Really, really show me, like, you know, that powerful shape. Because he looks strong. So you want him to look strong everywhere. You don't want him to have, you know, like, a ripped chest and then spaghetti limbs. You want him to look like he's got a Bowflex body everywhere. You know what I mean? It's not too intimidating if you've got a ripped chest and then little tiny legs, little tiny feet. Um, but yeah, I feel like this design's definitely been your most successful. The Morgan was really good too. This is a really good continuation of the uh, kind of ideas you were coming up with on that one. 
So really good. I don't really have that much more to say about it. Um, I like all this stuff. I just want you to finish it. Make sure his body looks powerful, you know? Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Really show me. I would trim the edge of his... Uh, the edge of his thing in gold, just so we can see the edge of it a lot stronger here. And I would push it out a bit to make his shoulders look very impressive. Hope that makes sense. But yeah. Um, yeah, that's really all I've got to say about it for now. Um, finish what you've done so far, and then we can talk about it again when you uh, push it to the final render. But for now, I think this is a really good start. So good job. Uh, yeah, you just need more shadows. More shadows and, and making his body look stronger. And that's really it. But yeah, so if I click it on and off, just look at what those little changes do to make him look more powerful. The wider leg, the enhanced shoulders, you know, like, the bigger arm, the swooping fabric. That's all stuff that seems minor when I'm painting it. But then when you click it on and off, it's like night and day in terms of how powerful the character looks. But anyway, uh, the other thing is, I feel like the bottom half of the character below the waist could all be a bit bigger. The top half seems a bit stronger than the bottom one. So maybe widen the hips a bit and then make the legs a little bit longer. So I feel like, uh, actually, let me see if I can just do this. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you real quick. If I just select out all this, all this, I would do this. just because it makes him feel more powerful adds a little bit of largesse to him and then you know repositioning him on the canvas to compensate but you know look at what that look at what that does see see how much more powerful he looks it's cuz now you're going for heroic anatomy instead of I, as a regular human being who's about 20 years old, stood in front of a mirror. You're going for that Michelangelo anatomy, where it's like, yeah, he's like a fully fleshed out, powerful dude. But anyway, I hope that makes sense. Especially the bigger bottom half. Hope that helps, bro. Because I love you. Okay, this is Why didn't you do any of the things I told you to uh, do? Well, you, uh, I spent so much time critting this. You didn't do any of it. Anyway. Uh Let's see. Here's where you're up to with Mordred. Okay, so uh, a lot of the same stuff I've been saying about all the stuff so far in the class is uh, it's going on here too. So does anyone see the first thing I'm going to say? Because uh, it's pretty obvious. Hey, it's Thomas got it. Look, 
His whole body fits inside a big flat rectangle. Look at that. Look how fucking boring that is because it fits inside of a bookmark. I've talked about this in the class a lot, and I'm surprised that you guys are still doing this. I'm very, very surprised that you're not seeing it. Don't do this. It's it's so so tight. It's just very squished. So now just to break that up, I mean the first thing I'm gonna do in my crit is just start breaking it up. I'm gonna pull his arm out to the side here and I'm gonna change the angle of this thing. You know it's just I'm gonna pull his arm out and I'm gonna have it be like a flip triangle composition. There's the axe head. And make the axe head bigger, and I'm gonna really push that shoulder. Now this is super scribbled because I'm changing a lot, but bring in the fur, kind of gauntlet. Uh, add some studs to it. I'm going to totally change the feet to get them out of that rectangle. So let's say one foot is over here, and then the other foot is over here. Just widening them out a bit. This is going to be more of a swoop than a straight line. Some red trim, and then see it hanging behind the other foot. Uh, gonna have this have some more weight to it at the top so you can see it folding around behind them. Gonna bring the light up to it more. Gonna have this thing in the back hanging way farther down. Gonna add these spots in so you can see that it's the same material. Gonna make this head human sized. So it's not like a shrunken head of like a little eight-year-old boy. Uh, gonna have some hair coming out of the top here. His fingers. Yeah, it's like, you know, if his head is this big back here, then this head that's being held three feet in front of him or two feet in front of him by his outstretched arm should be bigger. See, if it's a shrunken head, that's one thing, but because he's holding an axe and he's clearly a warrior, I feel like it should be that he just cut this head off. A shrunken head is something that you have, like, tied to a belt. It's like a charm, you know what I mean? In the cultures that have shrunken heads, they're like little totems that people have. They're not something that a warrior is going to hold up in his hand for no reason. Because of the costume of this character and because you drew him holding an axe, I feel like he should be a guy that's a headhunter. He should be a dude that killed a guy and took his head, you know what I mean? It just it makes more sense with your design to do that. Um, so, are you already seeing what these changes are doing in terms of the power of your character? In terms of how he commands the space on the page? Like, I know it's still messy because I'm basically changing everything, but um, it's like, what... You see, it's like, it's just more powerful. But yeah, it's like, that's not a shrunken head. Because the shrunken heads have a context in the cultures that they exist in. And warriors don't hold up shrunken heads because if they cut off a head, it wouldn't be shrunk. You gotta be dead first. Another weird thing is that I feel like there's a lot of gold weighted here on the head or brass or whatever it is then there's more here but then it just disappears and I feel like that shoulder is a great opportunity to add some more weight and make him look stronger and scarier so it's like why not give him like a pauldron that mirrors the thing on his arm I mean on his uh, on his breast so I'm gonna have some little pieces hanging off here to mirror the plates hanging down I'm gonna have a uh, little thing on the side to kind of mimic what's on his head but flipped upside down 
so like you know I can add some some notch work in there someone's calling me I'm not picking up my phone though because I'm teaching right now uh, I like the mask I'll give you that I like everything up here with the mask um, but I feel like the eyes need to be closer together and a little wider in the middle you gotta draw the face under a mask like this because let me shut this layer off and show you what I mean okay so if I zoom in here if this is his face I'm gonna use white or near white to show you what I mean you've shown me that his mouth is here his chin is here which means that his nose would be about here and then the insides of the eyes are where the nostrils begin so see what I mean it's like if, if the eyes are too far apart then he's not going to be able to see because the slits aren't lined up in the right way so the slits need to come in closer to the middle so they're closer to the bridge of the nose or it feels awkward so I'm going to bring them in a bit closer bring these in closer too uh, let me drop my eraser down here I don't mind the size of the mask really it's just the application of the things on the mask Uh, one thing that doesn't make sense, this top part is way wider than the bottom part. So it's like, you know, either have the gold come down on the sides like this, or have the stone go up. I'm going to bring the gold down on the sides. But you weren't showing me how the stone or the wood or whatever fits into the gold, so I wasn't entirely sure. Oh, it's the famous Dave Raposa. Uh, I'm seeing these coin things you have hanging from the neck, and that's really cool. So I'm going to do some more hanging from the top here, just to repeat that. Like little medals or something that he has tied up here. Little victory totems, something like that. Uh, but yeah, I don't know working in some little flourishes into the metal like they beat some pattern into it but yeah and then wrapping the tusks in a bit more to make them a little more ferocious maybe some teeth on the sides just to repeat that tusk shape <laughs> blade of the soul stone Nice. Dave has changed his name to Blade of the Soul Stone. Uh, I don't even know if that is Dave. Dave, if that's you, tell me on Skype. Because the other day, if you can believe this, somebody in James Zapata's stream was pretending to be you. They changed their name to Dave Raposa, and they were being a huge dick in the chat. And I uh, had to ban him. So I never know if you're real now. Okay, it is you. Good. <sighs> but anyway, so I'm not going to do much more on this because I'm basically telling you to change everything, but trust me, it'll help. You had some gold bands on the feet. That was cool. You can bring those back. Some studs. Some fur. But anyway, for all of you in the class and anyone who wants to design stuff like this or follow along, the next time you put a character inside of a straight rectangle and they look as thin as a hot dog, I swear to God, I'm going to snap. You guys have to stop doing this. 
it just instantly kills any interest because there's no silhouette. I look at it and I don't even see a character. I just see like, oh look, it's a Hershey bar. It's like, it's just a flat shape. You need an interesting silhouette. It needs weight. It needs action. It needs narrative. You know what I mean? So, I know this isn't the most polished paint over because it was really fast, but just change the big shapes, make a more interesting silhouette, and then there was nothing wrong with your design. I added some flourishes to make it a little more interesting, but your, your core design was pretty good. You just need to put it on a silhouette that emphasizes how good it is. But yeah, see now he's like occupying the space he's in. He has a, a presence. That's the thing. You want you want your design to have presence. You want it to catch the eye of the AD that's looking at it. <sighs> you could even make the head he's holding the head of some kid you don't like at school and then get reported to the guidance counselor's office for being fucking crazy. Crazy like me. Oh. Sorry. Just an idea. You could listen to ICP while you paint this. Uh. Yeah. Anyway, I really hope that makes sense. I know this can come off as sounding mean sometimes, especially because you guys put a lot of work into these. But really, really trust me when I say that the silhouette is like. That's the instant thing that the AD sees. So when you open up an image of a character, not to keep harping on this, but I really want you guys to understand, the first thing an AD is going to see in your portfolio when they open up a character isn't the details, it isn't the costume, it isn't the character. It's, it's none of that. It's not the lighting, it's not the textures. The first thing they're going to see is the silhouette. If it's an illustration, the first thing they're going to see is the composition. But with a character, the composition is the silhouette. It's, it's the positive space, which is the stuff you've drawn, versus the negative space, which is the background or empty space. So if the composition is boring in an illustration, it's a bad illustration. If a silhouette is boring in a character design, it's a boring character design. Even if it's the coolest costume you've ever seen, even if it's the most detailed thing you've ever drawn, if you put it on a skeleton that's boring, the whole thing's boring. It's the first thing. So if I open this up and it's boring as a silhouette, it doesn't matter what I see after that. It doesn't matter how cool the helmet is. It doesn't matter that you drew him holding a severed head. It doesn't matter that he has this awesome axe or shoulder pad or pelt. Because that huge important framework is bad, everything else falls like dominoes behind it and it all becomes bad. That's a super important thing. So just keep in mind, all those streams we used to do where we talked about composition and we taught that, in a character design, composition is still important, but it's the silhouette. That's what the composition is, okay? So even though it's not a scene, it's how you draw the character versus the background to generate visual interest. Hope that makes sense. Oh, and if it still doesn't, here's another thing I want you to think about. Every piece you do, uh, including character designs, even before you put down one line, the piece is already a rectangle because the canvas is a rectangle. The reason that drawing a character inside a rectangle like this is boring is because it's the frame shrunk down to a smaller size, which is basically a series of parallel lines. In the same way that two straight lines next to each other are more boring than zigzags, that's why this is boring. The eye doesn't necessarily understand it that way, but this is why this is boring. It's because we're already looking at a rectangle, but we don't notice it unless you repeat it. The second you repeat that box shape, our eye goes, oh wow, I'm looking at two squares. Instead of giving us an illusion that there's this really cool thing happening and distracting us from the fact that it's basically just four lines. So that's a more in-depth explanation of why. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. I'll click it on and off a few times if you want to screen cap it on demand. But uh, I'm full of coffee and my voice is getting shaky because I'm doing a power crit. Power crit. Anyway, hope this makes sense. Moving on. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
I already created your Morgon, so I'm not going to do it again. Let's talk about your Mordred. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what do you know? You you did one of the things I was going to tell you to do without me even telling you to do it. Thomas, this is your best design so far, buddy. It's even better than your Morgan. You did the, the hanging tabard fabric thing without me even telling you to do it. What do you know? What do you know? So let's talk about why this is strong. Okay, I'm going to do a, a, a breakdown layer for anyone watching who's trying to learn. Okay. Number one, we've got a big, powerful diagonal going through the page that generates interest. It's intersecting the character. It's dividing everything up. Number two, you've got a repeated diagonal thrusting up from that foot. It's not parallel, but it's another one going up through the body. Everything's facing this way, except the head, which is facing this way. So that turn makes a whole lot of interest. If the head was looking the other way, this would be a very boring piece. But that twist where he's looking over his shoulder adds a whole lot of narrative to it, and it breaks it up. Now, the next thing you're doing, all the lines of the, the, you know, the limbs and everything are very angular. So then you give us this thing to interrupt the angles and circle around the character, which is a repeated form from your Morgan. If I look at this down here, you did it with the ghost snake thing down here. So you're repeating that, but you're using it as a tabard that's ripped up or like a flag that's ripped up on this staff and you're, you're framing the character with this very wispy, very curvaceous form that's uh, the opposite of all the angles and straight lines you have in the design. So that's really cool. Uh, one thing I would do, however, is uh, I would widen it up up here and have it get gradually smaller and maybe stitch some stuff into it so it's very clear that it's a a flag or a standard or something. You know, just make it big enough up here that you can show that it was a flag or something once before it got all ripped up. Um, let's see. The other thing I like about it, this is a very cool helmet. Um, it's successful because it's not, it's not kind of boring like the one you did for Arthur was. The one you did for Arthur was very standard. We talked about, like, you know, if I searched for samurais on Google, this is what I'd find. It was too expected. This one's really cool because you've got the hair coming down. This is cool. You've got this triangle here. Then you've got another triangle here. So it's like a double diamond thing, two interrupted shapes. And then you've got these very long horns framing a circle coming out of the top and then flailing out to the sides. And whether or not it was intentional, these horns mirror the curve of this spear. Because you could have just made it a diamond spear, but you didn't. You made it a curved spear, so it's almost like a third horn coming out of the top. That's really cool. Um, yeah, it all looks really good. The only thing I would say... Uh, let's see. He looks a little chubby because it's not clear where the back is. Now, I know he's wearing armor and stuff. This, this is something you can easily fix with cast shadows. But bring in some shadows over here so he doesn't look so chubby. And uh, bring up the line of the waist here so it's not hanging so low. Bring it up to, like, here and really, really kind of curve the bottom of that plate in so he's a little thinner. You know what I mean? That's about it. I just don't want him to look like he's a, a fat bad guy. Anything you can do to uh, to play down the kind of chubbiness. But it's a really great design. This is just little stuff. See what I mean, though? Like, it can easily read as he's a fat dude underneath if you're not careful down there. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's really it. I mean, I don't know what this is wrapped around his waist. He has this kind of, like, tire. It could easily be, like a pool floaty where I make a little duck head coming out of the front and it's like swim safe kids I love swimming in pools you know it's like I'm not really sure what that is 
but it's a rope. Okay, uh, if it's a rope, then I would have the end of it coming off to the side here, just to get some more, some more counter turn. So it's like he's turning his head, this thing's flailing in the wind. If we throw the ends of the rope out and you texture them the same way you textured around his waist, then that will add even more power to the turn. More force to that curve. But yeah, I'd do that. Um, let's see. He's holding a head in a bag on his waist. Oh, is this supposed to be a head over here? Is that what that is? Okay, if that's supposed to be a head, then I would say turn the features up so have the eyes, have, you know, look at like a woman behind a veil or like the cover to the Frighteners or something and clearly show the eyes here, have the fabric pulled over it. But then to really hammer home that it's a head, I would stain the bottom of the bag red like this. It's black right now because your piece is black and white. But speckle it and stain it and um, very clearly show, you know, show some blood caked onto his armor over here from where the bag has rolled over when he's walking and stained it. But really show me that the bag is a uh, got a bloody bottom and that the blood has seeped through and touched the armor because if the fabric is thin enough that we can see the contours of his face through it, then it's definitely thin enough for blood to get through. That's really the only thing. Um, the blood will will sell that it's a head more than the features of the face will because you're not going to be able to see that many of them. So the big thing, uh, I love the design, love the pose, everything looks good. The biggest thing for me right now is uh, the shadows. I want you to get the lighting down the way you have in the mask in the body. So like I said in here, over here, uh, stuff I've started to draw in on over here. Choose your light source, wherever it's going to be, and really, like, you know, get the turning forms. Show me where the darks are going to be. Get all this stuff in. That's really the big thing. Um, minor stuff, before I move on to the next one. Uh, this feels weird to me down here. There's a lot of parallel lines here. I would interrupt it a little bit, or try to. I would make this one, because this, this, because this is straight and this is bent I think that the back of it needs to be a diagonal to show that this side's higher than this one because so if you look at it the armor comes down low over here because the leg is extended down but over here because the knees bent the armors up so in the back the curves would actually be descending on a diagonal if that makes sense so don't don't mirror the bottom of the scale mail thing right here by having another curved line make it more of a diagonal um, that'll make some more some more interest. Um, yeah, I mean that's really about it. I think. Really, really like this one. This is definitely your best so far in terms of the design, the page placement, the action, the narrative. This is definitely your strongest character in the set. So good job, good job. Love it. Love it. Love you. I love you. All right. Moving on to the next one. We've got this right here. This Merlin. I'm only talking about the Mordreds today. So let's take a look at, is this Mordred or Arthur? I can't tell. I'm assuming this ninja dude is Mordred. Uh, Okay, so this is Mordred. I'm assuming that this is, J yeah, this is Japan, right? This is Japan. Uh. All right. So, my main crit for this is that he looks like a Mortal Kombat character in a bad way. What I mean by that is this looks like a character that would have been designed in 1993 for like a Sega beat-em-up. Um, and you might be into that. That might be your thing. But in terms of using the culture, 
I don't really see anything in this except the thing on the face. This doesn't feel particularly Japanese to me. In fact, it feels more middle-aged German to me. It's like lots of studs and lots of black leather. The only Japanese things on here to me are the face mask with the ponytail and the size. I'm not really seeing the culture in this. Um, unfortunately, um, yeah, I mean, for the sake of the class, I will, uh, I'm gonna look up Shinobi over here. I feel like, okay, now I know what I'm trying to say. Now I get it. What I'm trying to say is, um, what I'm trying to say is, your Merlin feels very middle-aged Japanese, you know, like War of the Kingdoms kind of thing. Your Arthur feels very middle-aged Japanese, very feudal society kind of thing. And then your Mordred feels like, you know, a movie character for a ninja movie in 2006. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's the time period. So I'm going to say redesign them from the ground up with Feudal Japan in mind. Look at, if you want to make them a ninja, look at real ninja stuff. But this character feels like, like a Batman villain or something. It doesn't feel like a Feudal Japan villain. It's just too modern. So I don't really know what to tell you because I don't think I can really fix this design. It just feels very modern day and not antiquated like the other two. If there are references from Feudal Japan that you use to do this and I'm totally off the mark, please post them on the forum. I promise you I will look at them and I will readdress this in my next stream. I definitely um, want to see them if you have them. But I feel like you made this costume up to just look cool like a video game character. But, you know, that's the thing. It's like Ra's al Ghul from Batman does not work as an enemy for Feudal Japan King Arthur. It's two totally different things. Um, but I could be wrong. If I am, prove me wrong. Uh, it's the latest one from P. Tim, and I really love all the stuff he's done. As I mentioned in my last stream, P. Tim's set is my personal favorite of the class because he did the fully fleshed backgrounds with the character, which I mentioned I was hoping to see in the beginning. Um, so really cool. This is a cool Mordred. Uh, I like it a lot. Let's see. The first thing, I mentioned this last time, it feels very dim. It feels very, uh, very, very washed out and dark. I'm going to do a brightness contrast adjustment real quick. Like, look at that. I'm going to race out parts of it, but I'm going to erase out back here. For some reason I can't, but oh well. Um, but yeah, let's see. I feel like it should be brighter in the foreground. I do this. We select all this out. Messily real quick. This is gonna be a messy selection, but I just wanna show you what I mean. I feel like the values in the background are working okay, but as far as the foreground goes, Oh, I didn't have it set to black, my bad. But anyway, I hope you see what I mean. If you heighten the brightness and the contrast of the character because he's got flames in front of him and he's in the foreground, all of a sudden it's like crazy. He jumps out a ton. That's what you want. So, okay, I'll set it to black. I didn't realize I didn't have it set to black. 
Um, but yeah, I'll clean this up real quick. But does that make sense? You see what you see what just that did? I mean, you can push it even more than I did, but just just that real quick selection and adjustment makes the piece way better, way faster. Um, need to delete this. Uh, yeah, you could even darken the background a bit. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do an overlay layer. Uh, first off, I like your design a lot. I'm not really gonna talk that much about the design. I might add a couple quick things at the end, but most of this is gonna be, you're so close to final anyway, it's like, I'm just gonna talk about some, I feel like you could push the lighting in a few spots because he's in front of a fire. I feel like the fire could be brighter in the middle. The embers could be brighter scattered around here. And then the parts facing down towards the fire could be catching more light, more warm light to really set up the lighting. So, not really in the top of the character because I feel like you've done it pretty well, but in the bottom, I feel like there's more opportunity. You could have embers flying around, definitely. You could have all kinds of atmosphere effects because of the smoke and everything. Um, yeah, there's all, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. But... Yeah, this is really cool. It's looking really good. Uh, but you see what that does to the piece? Just those two quick things. I just selected out everything in the foreground and boosted it, and then I added some lighting. And if you think it's a little too bright for what you want, that's okay, but I hope you see what I'm talking about. Hope you at least see how much better it catches the eye when you do this. Because it definitely uh, it makes the foreground the foreground, and it definitely makes the background the background. Uh, the only other thing I would really suggest, show me some more fire back here. It doesn't have to be super bright, but there's so much smoke, and there's really no fire. I feel like, you know, some glow on the buildings would really sell it. You know, some orange on the walls of these buildings where the fires are being lit. If you look at, you know, any movie where a city's on fire or something like that, the orange glow goes up the buildings pretty significantly. I would uh, definitely try to sell that. Show me it catching, show more down and where the smoke is beginning. You know, if it's that smoky, the light is going to it's going to reflect all through the smoke and bounce off the particles and make this really kind of strange glow. So, I mean, really you could even do like a like a bloom of it back here. I don't know how much fire you want in that city, but it could have a lot more warm light back there. Uh, let's see. So anyway, um, the next thing, also on the overlay, I'm gonna get a blue, dark, little grayed out. I'm gonna wash over some of the trees, stuff like that. Just more color. As much as I love your illustrations you've done for the class, uh, the biggest repeated thing is that there's not enough color in them. They tend to be very, very uh, washed out gray. I want to see more color. I want to see more richness. Darkening the blue of the sky a bit to make the character pop forward off it more.
But yeah, I hope this is making sense. It's just subtle things to really help sell your piece. But see what that does? Um, the very straight white lines of the clouds are bothering me a little bit. I know they're catching moonlight, but I feel like we could, you know, interrupt them a bit, show more cloud form coming in, blur them out a bit. Just having those very thin white lines makes them feel flat, like they're cut paper. It makes it seem like you just put some lines on the page arbitrarily. Show me more form in the clouds. Make them soft. Make them transparent. You know, clouds are transparent. Soften them up a bit. Um, but anyway, th those are my big suggestions. Uh, I really like the piece, though. Showing a little more smoke back here. In terms of the design, uh, I think you've done pretty well. The, the only two things that I have issue with in the design, well, there's actually this three. Um, this needs work. I feel like the, the staff of that axe needs to come out a bit. Or you need to redesign the blade a bit. The axe feels like very stunted and unnatural to me right now. Feels very weird. Um, I don't think I've really seen an axe quite that shape before. And I definitely feel like the wood has to come out of the top. <clears throat> the hat feels a bit too elfish and symmetrical for me. I might readdress the hat. I don't mind if you keep it pointed, but I feel like you need to put something else on it to really sell it. It just feels very uh, elfish. I don't know. It's like if he wasn't wearing a hat and he just had the long hair, that would look scarier to me than putting a very elfish hat on him. Now, I do like the hat. I like the idea of him having a hat. I just don't like the execution of the hat. Giving him something else, I think, would be stronger. Like, uh, I mean, even if I just gave him one of these very kind of square top animal hats and I put, like, you know some metal in it or something like that like even that looks scarier to me than giving him an elf hat but yeah that's all I'm saying if you want to have a pointy hat that's fine just don't make it so elfish make it you know a little asymmetrical work some other design stuff into it whatever you gotta do I just uh, this makes it feel like he's some kind of children's wizard or something like that I don't know um but yeah, I mean, that's really, uh, bring the belt up a bit more, maybe. That feels a little, his chest feels a little extended. Because his knees are bent and he's kind of kneeling forward with the axe, I feel like the waistline of the belt has to come up to compensate. It felt very low right there, like almost to his crotch. I think you should bring it up. Uh, the hands need to be redone. It's a common thing. Look how, I mean, his face is behind the hands, but look how tiny the hands are. They need to be significantly bigger and better executed. You know, that's a common thing, though. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I think that's really it for my crits on him. But yeah, so... Good job. Push the shoulders a little bit more on the back side to really show that, that shape. But this is looking really good. <clears throat> Doesn't it draw too much attention that the horizon is on the level of the buildings? I don't think that's a horizon. I think this is a tree line. I just painted over it with a little too much yellow. There really isn't, you know... This is a tree line. This is all trees in the foreground, and then fire and smoke, and then buildings behind them. <clears throat> I don't think it draws too much attention. But anyway. Uh, hope that makes sense. I'll click it on and off.
Again, the hat's really my only big issue. You can keep it pointed, just don't make it look like a wizard hat. Make it look evil. I uh, hope that makes sense. Really good work again, though. Consistently, you've been doing really good stuff. Uh, talked about this, talked about this, talked about that. Uh, okay, so that one, this one, that one. I think we're coming towards the end here. Which is good because I got to get back to work. Okay, this one. I forgot about that one. All right, I don't think I missed any. So these two are the last two, as far as I know. All right, so first is this one. Um, the biggest crit I have is that it's fly swatted. Uh, what I mean by that is everything is flat forward. So here, I'll show you what I mean. So here's the arm, and here's the other arm, and here's the body, and here's the leg, and here's the leg, and here's the head. Everything is flat, facing forwards. And then it's actually falling into the, tra into the rectangle trap that I've been talking about, and I think you noticed it was, so then you added this huge thing to try and break it up, but it's a hard sell. It is a hard sell. So let's talk about it. Um, okay, so if this arm's swooping off to the side here, I'd make it a little heavier. And then if this arm is over here, I would clearly make the body in front of it. So this is a very uh, rough sketch you've given me, but I would clearly have the body be turning. So here's the edge of the chest right here. And then this shoulder is now behind it. And because the shoulder is behind it, I can select this. And I can move it. Oops. Move it in. Something like that. Just so the arm is kind of moving away and then down, and it's not so flat, the exact same length as the opposite arm. Makes the proportions look weird when you do that. Um, in terms of design, though, I hate I hate harping on anatomy in these crits because it's like every week. If I do if I do everybody's anatomy issues every week, it's like way too much time. Anatomy is something you got to work on on your own. I can point out the mistakes, but I'm not going to have enough time to fix them all for you. Uh, I feel like to push a diagonal, see how straight that is? See how awkward that is? That's such a straight line right there. It's just weird. Um, I'm going to pull up a diagonal here to try and get rid of that. So now this, this cloak... So he's got like a half cape, is what I'm taking away from this design, is he's got one of those very 1800s half capes, which is cool, but, you know, there's a couple things you gotta address. So, the half cape's coming down behind here. Uh, now, it makes no sense to have this thing fan out on both sides. You gotta pick a side. And I would say to kill this one and have it flailing out on the side that the sword is swooping from. Like he just turned or something and this is getting kicked out. That will also help the diagonal up through the body of the character and lead the eye in a bit. 
So I'm going to have this come out here and fold over itself. And again, apologies for how rough this is. I'm just trying to show you quick things real fast. This will also balance out the shadow of the inside of the cloth because now you'll have one down here to balance out this one up here. Um, you can have it behind the dude. And then you can have a little lip of it over here if you want. I don't know how low that's really going to be hanging though. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is live. The waist is very busy and it's making them look very chubby in the middle. I would fix that. Try and make them, make them look a little bit more manly. Which is, uh, manly is a triangle up here and then very much narrow down here and then wide in the arms. You know, it's like, that's, that's manly. That's what you want. If you do too much of a, uh, if you do too much of this above the waist and then this below the waist, it starts to look female because it gets into that hourglass shape. So watch out for that. Um, look at that. That makes no sense. Why is that doing that? You know, just stuff like this. Start thinking about gravity and how things hang. And if that's a big metal sheath, there's no way it's going to be doing that. It's going to be doing something like this. That's a heavy, heavy thing. Unless his legs are kicked out and he's in mid-swing and there's a lot of momentum behind the turn of his body, there's no way that that sheath is going to be flying in mid-air. It's going to be over here. It's a heavy piece of metal. Now, his legs are extremely thin and they're extremely close to each other. I'm going to try and change that. I'm going to kick them a little farther apart and I'm going to turn this foot towards us a little bit. Now again, this is super messy, so apologies. You sent me a really rough sketch, so it's not my job to clean up your lines. I'm just talking about the design and the balance. But I'm not going to do a perfectly drawn leg for you if you didn't send me a well-drawn leg. <clears throat> Dave, if you want to come on and talk, you can. Just call me. I see you Skyping. Uh. So he's got like a Dracula thing going on. Rain that in a bit. It's pretty uh it's a pretty huge collar. Now the last thing, the last big thing I'm gonna talk about here is the uh the head. It's very small, and it's uh, got very childlike features. Mm. I don't know if he's supposed to be a kid, but he's got adult anatomy and just a kid head. If he's supposed to be a kid, you didn't draw him as a kid. So I'm, I'm creating him as an adult, because the only thing on him that looks like a kid is the face. And it looks like the mad magazine kid. That's all that face is to me. But the way you drew the body is an adult man. So that's what I'm doing. believe the culture is revolutionary Russian, if I can remember correctly. Yeah, if you guys are going to mix ages, at least give me a kid body with a fully grown man's head. That's all I want to see.
I don't want to see men with kid heads. I want to see kids with man heads. Um, so, again, I need you to redo the face. I'm not going to tell you what to do because that's not my job. Um, but you do need to redo the face because he looks like the mad, mad magazine kid. In terms of the hat, it's kind of cool. But without anything on it, it could very easily just be a black flat top. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, I'm not sure that it's a hat yet. It's like, pretty easily a black flat top, actually. Um... I'm going to scroll through here looking for something real quick. Hopefully it won't take too long. If it does take too long, I'm going to be mad. Uh, there it is. This is what I was going to suggest. See how on this guy wearing one of those hats, there's like belts and straps and like an insignia worked into it? That's the kind of stuff I want to see in this hat to really sell it that it's a hat. I want to see like some kind of badge of office here and then some belts on the sides holding it in place. This guy's really mad. He loves killing. You know, something like this, metal piece cresting it some fur texture to show me that it's a fur hat and not a black flat top. I'm not going to fix the face. I'm just going to change the mouth to a mustache so he looks like an adult and not a sneering little boy. But <laughs> it's crazy how fast he became an adult just by forcing a mustache. Um, but yeah, these are my these are my big issues with it. I'm not going to spend too much longer on it. Actually, I think I might be done right now. But see what that does. See what that stuff does. Just, you know, reeling it in. Hope that helps. There's too many there's too many random lines in your drawing all over the place. There's no there's no gravity and motion going on. I need to see some weight. Hope that helps. Bra. Um okay, the last one is this one. the last one. So this is falling into Mortal Kombat Syndrome 2. Um, anytime you use those masks you run the risk of Mortal Kombat. Even if you love Mortal Kombat, it's got bad designs. <laughs> now, there's a really weird thing happening here, and it's the first thing that caught my eye, so it's the first thing I'm going to talk about. Okay. He has a tabard with a tiger on it, which is fine. You can do that. But his body... Follow me here. His body is turned this way. Three-quarter this way. The tiger's head is turned... A really stupid fucking tiger's head that I'm going to draw right here. It's turned the same angle. So what it looks like is he actually has a carving of a tiger in his chest that's turning with his body. Now, <laughs> I feel like the only way to fix it... Oh, that's the other thing. Fuck, I didn't even see that. He has a belt right here. And the tiger's jaw is coming out over the belt. Do you see that? The tiger's jaw is coming over the belt. So it can't be 
Is it a real tiger? Is he wearing like a, a tiger? Okay, is that what's going on? That's so strange. Okay, so he's he's wearing a, a whole tiger in front of him. See, I thought it was a tiger's face that was stitched into his shirt, like embroidery. He's wearing an actual tiger pelt with the face, with the bones inside the face, because it still has the teeth, and it's not laying flat. So, it's like a whole tiger skull inside of a tiger skin in front of him. So his silhouette would look like the white tiger zord. There'd be a head up here from the side, then the chest would come down, then it would be like a tiger mouth down here coming out of his stomach, then it would be like his groin, and then his legs. It's a very Power Rangers move right there. Uh, but anyway, if that's the case, then I can crit around it. Um, okay, so if he's wearing a tiger pelt, the first, the first suggestion from me is that the back of the tiger needs to come down on the sides like a cape, with the legs, like this, and the tail. Like, that's the first thing that has to happen, is to show me the back of it. Um, I'll keep the tiger body. Thomas, I'm going to make this work. I never said it was good. What would have been better is if you had the tiger mouth coming over the top of his head like he was inside of its mouth. This is really strange. It would have been better if the tiger's mouth was like here and he was like inside of it. That would have been cool. Uh, change it. Hmm... But then it's just a Japanese version of the guy from Gladiator. You know what I mean? Then it's just Tigris of Gaul. Uh. Well, the armor design in Game of Thrones was totally ripped from Tigris of Gaul. Mm hmm. It's this dude. This dude. If you've ever seen Gladiator, that's the uh, the go-to animal head helmet. But anyway. Hmm. What can I do here? I'm going to keep rolling. This is a challenge for me. The easiest thing I could do to fix this would be to put the tiger's mouth over the guy's head. But I want to try to keep the tiger in its chest and see if I can still make it look cool. That's a way harder challenge. If the tiger's mouth is coming over his head, he's instantly cool. This is like really difficult um let's see yeah the head can't be bald that's one thing um hmm you go over here I think you need some tribal tattoos no I'm just kidding I'm just kidding. He doesn't need that. No one needs that. No one should ever do that. Never do that. Please. I was just kidding. Don't. Don't ever do it. Okay, so... Uh... Do, 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 do. I'm going to do the, I mean, he's supposed to be obviously a ninja because he's got that mask, like a ninja samurai mix. I'm going to do the obvious. I'm going to give him a head wrap. And I'm going to have it come underneath as well. Hmm. 
Man, it's so hard to fight the urge of putting that tiger head on his head. Whew! I don't know, Jacques. That's what I was asking in the beginning. It should either be a tiger pattern stitched into his cloth, or it should be on his head. Having a big tiger head in the middle of your chest is weird with the teeth. My suggestion, I'm not going to go find the ref and take the time to do it, but my suggestion would be to take the bones out of the tiger's head and make it laying flat like a pelt. Having the jaw bones inside of it with the teeth just seems really strange to me. Um, jumping off his head like that. This would be totally fine if it was a pelt. But it's not. Can I make this work? This is like a challenge. Hmm. I don't know, man. I guess I'm going to have to just do it. I don't want to do it. It's going to take too long. It's going to take fucking forever. All right, let's see if I can speed run this. Uh... Okay, so he's got his belt, he's got this tiger paw hanging over here, his shirt's coming up here, he's got his neck guard thing here, he's got his back here, I'm going to clearly show the back being there so he doesn't look too chubby again, show it in there, in the front over here, I'm going to have this belt crossed up over because that's a quick fix, cross belts always look cool. Thanks, comic books, for showing us that. Uh, I'm going to have this cloth thing hanging from the other side to balance out the pelt. So the rope thing tied around his waist is going to be over there. Um, obligatory cross belt. Um, I'm going to grab my Tigress of Gaul reps oops that's my West Bird thing I was looking at earlier uh Tigris of Gaul of Maul whoops that's Tigris of Gaul and Darth Maul together the most badass thing you've ever seen um Tigris of Maul what a shit idea alright so grab this, come on, load, please, just fucking load. Oh god, come on. Alright. So there's this, there's this. Um... I'm gonna do something unexpected. Maybe. I'm gonna make like a... I'm gonna make like a... like a samurai helmet that is also a tiger. And then... hold on for it. Wait for it. I'm going to work the tiger's face into the design of the samurai helmet up here, like this, uh, bear with me, this is my greatest challenge yet, and counter curves there, sides of the face. This is going to be really rough, again, because I just don't have the time to make this perfect. I'm just going to show you what I'm thinking. I'm going to have the sides come down, like on the gladiator dude, with the teeth things. I like that. And then I'm going to take the actual tiger head from the pelt, and I'm going to put it over here. So now this arm is slung over his back. 
The other arm will be hanging down over here. I can kill this one. Yeah. I don't know, man. I can show the other plating over here. This is a really messy paint over, but hey, what am I supposed to do? Some armor going on underneath that cross belt with some like stripe designs because of the tiger. Um, yeah, man. I mean, this is a hard one to fix. You basically got to redo the whole head and change the chest because having a giant tiger head with bones in it come out of your chest is just totally impractical. Um, I'm going to put the tiger head over here, but anyway, sorry, best I can do. I got to go, because I've been on here too long. Uh, good luck to everybody who I gave crits to, those of you who were unsatisfied with my crits, specifically this last one I did because it was super rushed and I didn't really know what to do. Uh, hey, I'm sorry. It's free. Whatever. Have a great week, guys. I'll talk to you next week. I love you.